In this series of videos, we are building a working prototype application based on a database, in this case using Oracle XE, and we're using Oracle Apex Application Express. If you want to work along with the examples, you should start with Video 1, and you should go to this URL and download the scripts you need to build some tables and insert data so that you're ready to build the application. I decided to make a couple more videos to show a, a few more things about working with the master detail form. And so I'm going to go into student information. And of course here we would rather see the name of the team and the name of the major so I can quickly make those edits. I can come into the uh, designer page, select team ID, student team ID and I can switch from display text to based on an LOV then select the team list and go ahead and apply that change then I could do the same thing for the student major select on a love and pick uh, a student major LOV and then apply changes and then when I run this page I'll see the names instead of the numbers but more importantly what I wanted to do is show you uh, one I think there's a glitch in Apex for the version I'm working with which is probably not the most recent version if you're downloading and working with it right now but if I were to look at this master detail of attendances and evaluator data for this student if I want to add another workshop and I click create the student ID for Barbara here which let's actually let me turn that on it's not showing so I'll switch over to edit and do student uh, ID and I want to uh, display only and apply changes and run that so we see that that's 5001. When I click the Create button to add another workshop that she attended, when I click Create, the student ID doesn't show up. Now, chances are if you just popped into this form for the first time, the uh, attendant student ID, which is the foreign key that stores student ID, it may be hidden and you'll need to turn that on. Uh, but what's most important about this is you do not see that the foreign key for student ID it has not received the value it should have gotten from the master form so I need to make an edit and the edit is not on this page but on the previous page and on that particular create button so I will come back to create uh, no excuse me I'm not gonna click create I'm gonna edit this first edit this page and I will come down to the attendance area where I've got a create button go to the properties of that button and what I have found in the last year in working with Apex is that Apex does not set this situation up correctly it says action when button clicked and you're going to go to, from page 46 to page 47 in my example we want to set on the target form, the target page, we want to set the foreign key attendance student ID, but we don't set it based on the same field in that page. It would be set from page 46. So I'm going to click and select the object because I'm not even sure what it's named. And I'm going to click the little flashlight. And I actually want something from the current page, which is page 46. So I'll type that in so it narrows down my search and which one of these would have the actual student ID and that would be P46 underscore student ID so I will select that and click apply and then I will apply the changes and run the page so now when I click create I should see this 5001 passed forward to page 47 and it is now obviously this is not that useful in that we may not know exactly what the student ID is. I can add an LOV for the workshop ID and I could add a little bit of SQL to show the actual student name just to remind us while we're on this page without the student information 
from the previous master page. So I'm going to edit page 47 and I'm going to go to uh, workshop ID, attendance workshop ID, which is a foreign key, and that will be a select list and that will be based on, and I could change this, I could say workshop, just say workshop, and that will be based on list of workshops, display null value, yes, just add a dash. Then I'm going to go to the, uh, well actually see, I'll make that change, and then I actually want to add an item. I'm seeing the student ID, but I want to add a text field that will allow me to display additional student information. So I'm going to click on uh, this form and add a uh, page item, and it will be display only. And I'm going to call this student uh, info. The label student info, that'll be fine. Then I will actually want this to be, uh, it'll be based on a page item value. I'll go ahead and click next. Then here I'm going to have it uh, in this case, and there's more than one way to do this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it look at a page item value and return what it says is a single value. And I've already written this code. I will copy it and paste it in and just briefly explain what I've got here. So I'm saying I'm returning a single value, but actually what I'm going to do is concatenate three values into a single display field. So I'm saying select and then from uh, let me do this here real quick just to remind you. Going to the object browser and looking at the student table. So I'm going to combine student user ID, student first name, student last name and I'd already looked those up and written the SQL. Select student user ID and I'm going to put a colon there this syntax is student user ID, pipe, pipe, single quote, colon, space, single quote, then pipe, pipe again, that's their concatenation symbol, uh, then the name of the field for student first name, concatenate, pipe, pipe, single quote, space, single quote, pipe, pipe, student last name. This is coming from the student's table where, and I'm setting it where student ID in the table that's the column name, matches the value. The value for student ID matches what we currently have in this page as page 47, attendance student ID, the foreign key value. And I'll go ahead and create that and run that. And I'll need to cancel and come back in. So I'm going to, again, looking at Barbara Cry with 5001 as a student ID. I now am able to make a selection for the workshop I have the student ID showing. You might decide to, to hide that again. And then I have pulled in information about the student so that we can actually see the name of the student when we're on this form. In the next video, however, I'm going to show you what I think is a much more sophisticated, sophisticated way to do this without having to write any SQL.